Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to talk about how to make battery eliminator for AA and AAA batteries, but before I start, I want to talk about gray cards a little bit. I white balance this camera with a gray card. This card should look gray now. If I used automatic white balance or some other white balancing, if I tried to balance, I have LED lights up there, tungsten lights up there. If I tried to do it any other way, it would look orange or green or some other weird color, not gray like it's supposed to be. So when you use your digital cameras, you got a new digital camera for Christmas, go out and buy a few dollar gray card, the same one that Ansel Adams uses. In fact, it's got Ansel Adams system printed on the back. And use it on your new digital camera so whites look white and flush tones look flush tone and everything else looks the color it's supposed to be. Okay, hint about cameras first off. Second, I bought this transformer, this transformer here from Fry's for about nine bucks. It's got voltage selectable. You plug in things uh, to here to uh, get the different voltages. Basically, they're set at battery voltages, three volts, four and a half, six, and so on. The trick, though, is to get from here to your battery compartment on whatever device you're using, your camera, my LED lights, whatever. It comes with these things to help you adapt to um, laptops and so on, iPods and so on. But it doesn't help you adapt to double and triple A batteries. How do we do that? Stranded wire. Strip it, turn it over, twist it up. We're going to make this wire fit into this. That's the idea. Plug in your soldering iron. I do my soldering on the stove because stoves are nice and um, they're used to hot stuff. Get your tin lead solder and solder away. Of course, the soldering iron doesn't get this hot this fast. It takes a while. This is filmmaking. I want to be short. So I got my, um, got my leads all tinned up and they should fit. They should fit in here. Use a pair of pliers or some kind of, you know, something to squeeze the tin lead solder to the right shape so that it fits in, fits in nicely into this hole. Of course you might find wire that fits in nicely as well instead of tinning it up and making it. Okay, so that's the first step. Last note to make before I move on. Clean up well. Use paper towel. Do not, when you clean this up, don't use it on food products. You, you, you're in the kitchen. Don't use it on food products, whatever you clean up with. Um, make sure that uh, you get rid of all the tin lead and it goes into the waste and it doesn't go into your food. You don't want to poison yourself with lead. So be careful. Uh, you might have a workbench in the garage, which would be even better than a stove. Um, but whatever you do, don't poison yourself with lead. Definitely don't put the tin lead solder in your mouth to, to solder things. Okay. We'll go on to the next step, which is actually getting something which can fit in your battery compartment and hook up to those wires and, and give you the correct voltage in your battery compartment. That's next. Okay, as promised, I'm going to do what's next. Uh, first of all, I twisted the wire. I hand twisted it. You might find twisted wire. It took me about a half hour to twist it. it. Takes a while. You can do it. it. Takes a while. Okay. Check out. Uh, Here's an inexpensive voltmeter. You get it about 20 bucks. Uh, check the polarity. Make sure you have the right polarity. You know what's positive, what's negative. This cheap transformer, it wasn't really clear what was positive and negative. So you can't see it on the camera, but I made a little mark just to let people know what, what the positive terminal is on this using my little voltmeter. That's about 20 bucks. So, so far we've got about 30 bucks invested in, the, in this project. Now, next trick. What do we use to substitute for a battery? There you go. I grabbed old pencils. Um, this has some eraser left inside the metal stuff. Um, and I put it about the same length as the battery. And I double checked using, using this resistance just to make sure that this has a uh, carbon core which is a resistor essentially. So you don't want current being conducted from here to, to your lead. You just want um, 
you want an insulator here. Well, the eraser's an insulator. So leave a little bit of eraser inside. I've already stripped my leads here. So all we do is take a lead, put it inside the um, opening right there. Now, get my pliers. All I do is crimp down on this metal piece to start to make the metallic contact to hook up the wire to make the metallic contact um, using is an ordinary pencil to hook up the wire to make a metallic contact. Okay, I'm going to stop the camera again. It takes a little while. Basic idea is you crimp stuff. Also, you'll notice this is smaller than a double A. It's even smaller than a triple A. So I've got all my little crimping done. I've got a couple metallic contacts. The the eraser holders on the pencils. I don't even have to sand them. These happen to be pure metal rather than painted over. Red is for positive. Um, I already checked my transformer. As you're doing this, um, it's prone to breakage. Just double check electrical continuity once in a while. Wrap it up with electrical tape so that the wires that are attached to the, pen, to the eraser holders um, stay in electrical contact for a long period of time. Just wrap it up with some electrical tape. Okay, it's time to try it. I'm going to try it on that LED light there. I'm going to turn off the fluorescence. Color ought to look weird. And plug this in to my LED lights and see what it does and see if we've got ourselves a battery eliminator. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am now using my battery, letterman, uh, battery eliminator on the LED lights that are on this camera. I should look a little weird because I've turned off the tungsten. Different light, white balance. The gray will not look gray anymore, but the battery eliminator works. Very nice battery eliminator for uh, AAA batteries. Should work just fine for double A's as well because double A's are slightly bigger, but most of the time, if something will accept a double A, a triple A does fit in that slot. So this battery eliminator ought to work for both double A's and triple A's. This is the fun physicist signing off. I'm going to show you the gray card just for white balance before I do. Does this still look gray now? I've turned off the tungsten so the white balance has changed. Signing off. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.